Now we're going to talk about why we just don't want to rely on subjective resume reviews, okay? Now the first thing we want to think about is how job history does not communicate skill proficiency. In other words, subjectively looking at a resume and looking for these keywords doesn't distinguish what the candidate knows, which is book knowledge, from what the candidate can actually do, which is procedural knowledge. Also, just because a candidate hasn't spent a great deal of time at one place is an immediate red flag. You know, remember that these job descriptions, they're extremely subjective. And when they're extremely objective and they're not aligned to a common framework like Sophia, you're actually gonna create a lot of confusion. Therefore, the candidate may be working in a role or a place that didn't do a good job of communicating expectations and those expectations didn't align with their career path. So just remember, before judging someone else, think about some of the situations you've been in yourself. Higher degrees do not significantly influence performance. In fact, our international study, we had a few doctoral students, but at best they scored Sophia level three, which is just average performance. But most of them were in Sophia level two, which is not even in the proficient range now. They're more in the novice range and need a lot of help. However, the most interesting data point here was the master's degree students. There were more master's degree participants in level one, the lowest competency level, than level four, which is enabled. Now, that brings us to proprietary job descriptions. They don't scale well and they actually contribute to the workforce gap because you're just looking on Indeed and Monster. And so therefore, the definition of a system administrator will vary from organization to organization. Also, the common employer is gonna trip up on a very fundamental definitions like knowing the difference between knowledge, skill, and competency. Knowledge is book knowledge. Skill is demonstrable task performance, which you can actually do. And competency is both having the book knowledge and the skill proficiency and performing it at a certain level within a certain domain. So that's the difference there. Now what this brings you to is these highly advertised certifications they do not significantly influence performance. Even the gold standard, the CSP itself, advertises itself as being the one certification that were certified people versus non-certified people. The certified people were supposed to perform better, right? Well, they don't. But think about that for a second. How can a multiple choice exam that prioritizes memorization actually ensure skill proficiency, high levels of task performance, now that was debunked in 2020. There was a study that was conducted. They showed that CSSP certified professionals did not outperform non-CSSP certified professionals when they were doing certain tasks. Additionally, in my study, what the CSSP found was that it was associated with overconfidence. That means people who had the CSSP rated themselves on average very confident in their ability. But when it came to actually identifying controls that resulted in data breaches, they were just either average performers or they were even novice performers. So in summary, a single certification does not influence proficiency. However, my study found that combining both implementing and auditing certifications as well as vendor specific certifications, like in Microsoft, Kubernetes, Palo Alto, and so forth, those were associated with the top performers. Now, this is probably the fact because when you implement both a diagnostic and an implementing perspective along with something very specific, you're getting a systems thinking perspective at this point. And so you're not evaluating problems from a myopic viewpoint. Now, you're also dealing with real people who are supporting real families. Think of your daughter or your son or loved ones that was on the other end of this hiring process. Would you quickly thumb through that resume or make a gut response or a quick decision? You probably wouldn't. And so you gotta think about why are we boiling down people to these bullet points? They're more than that. And why are we sending these generic email responses that say we're gonna move forward with another candidate and we don't give them anything they can work on? So should we be using a skills-based framework to identify the exact skills that were not demonstrated in the interview and then share that with the candidate so they can apply with this next year? Otherwise, our lack of empathy could dissuade future participants and further contribute to the workforce gap.